Well, hello and welcome everybody to the eighth episode of Open Talk. Um, I'm your host, Travis Keys. I am a New Yorker, a foodie, a movie lover, a photographer, and chairman of APA New York. Um, I created this show to have candid, honest, and open talks about the current climate of uh, photography in the age of COVID-19. And uh, tonight, I am very, very happy to introduce two people. Um, I have uh, Susan and Cliff. Uh, why don't you kind of say hello there to us? Hey! How's it going? What is going on? First and foremost, Thanks. where are you guys uh -huh. are Zooming from? Uh, it's a long story. We're out here in Moab, Utah right now. We shouldn't be, but we are. <laughs> well, how did, how did that happen? Our last yeah, workshop, uh, Susan's been traveling for longer than I am, but we went from Vegas to Death Valley for a workshop, and then we went out to uh, Moab, and that's when everything kind of hit the fan. So we stayed out here. You know, New York's a tough place to be right now, and we had a tough time even thinking about getting back. I was supposed to be heading out to Japan from here, so I had a one-way ticket and not to come home. So uh, we stayed. Yeah, I figured New York City wasn't the safest place to go back to, and also all our work got canceled. So, I mean, why not stay in the beautiful location uh, where it's really nice and we can be creative, or uh, or head back to New York where it's kind kind of. So, I mean, you certainly guys are in a beautiful, beautiful area. And uh, what's it like uh, been for you guys uh, being? And what's your what's your living arrangements at the moment? Hmm. <laughs> well, we we're lucky enough to have a friend out here who's renting us their RV. So we've been living in a 26 foot trailer for the past two months and um, we haven't killed each other yet. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, so those of you in New York City who are complaining about being stuck in your apartment, uh, imagine a 26 foot trailer. To live. I think yeah. that's uh, pretty challenging right there. <laughs> very, very challenging. Very, very it's challenging. It's so um, obviously I want to jump into you. You both, uh, you know, work together a lot and uh but so susan i'm gonna start with you and uh, we're gonna kind of go back in time to a little susan where did you first uh pick up a camera and, and what was that camera sure so uh, out of high school i was interested in photography i took the typical black and white photography classes but i did my first internship with a newspaper and um it was filmed back then too just to paint the picture of how how long ago this was and they printed my picture in the newspaper and from that moment on i was hooked um, I love the concept of being able to share a moment in time or an experience with people. And um, I, I basically bought all the newspapers, that first episode of uh, my pictures being printed. But I, photojournalism was such a great training for me to become the photographer who I am today because I learned how to capture a story in one image. And working with the best photographers in the newspaper I was at was really, really inspiring and motivational. And it's kind of guided me on my course now so um from doing photojournalism i went on to do event photography weddings portraits and i absolutely love doing that because you're able to spend the most special day with your clients who become my dear friends uh, because of this and you capture these moments where they'll cherish for the rest of their lives and you get to be creative so over the years i just push the limits i do all my types of photography so i'll make sure i incorporate a landscape photography into my wedding pictures and light painting and they love it because that's like really my true passion is landscape photography and light painting photography but wedding photography is so special because you know you're capturing these special moments so from yeah. then i ended up um actually growing into doing um, education. So my true love all along has been travel. And um, what I love about travel is you're truly living in the moment, you're having these experiences. And because of photography, I was able to share that with my friends and family back home. And over the years, here's some of my workshops. Um, I've uh, I started out by doing one local workshop, fall foliage, I had six uh, close friends come and just seeing how photography how my teaching helped them to grow and also inspire me as well, see th things at angles I wouldn't have seen. And um, it was just overall such an amazing experience. I thought this is what I want to do with the, re the rest of my life is yeah. keep inspire and create these experiences. So along with Cliff, we started a, a business. Um, my business is called Photo Adventures and together we partner in Cook Beach. This is our past adventure in Death Valley. Uh, we took the Jeeps out to Bad Blood, we can go to the racetrack playa here. Um, and these are some of our students. You can tell they were having a miserable time. Yeah, it's really <laughs> I have to admit, this is the first time on Open Talk we've had uh, two guests in one box. So, and, and, yeah. <laughs> I 
hope that works for you guys. But, um, it's great. It's great. Yeah, I think there might be a little bit of an echo. I'm not sure if your volume is off on your computer, Travis. I'm not getting it, but uh, I'll take a look. But so these are our pictures from what I've been doing since the beginning of the year. I've been traveling since January. I started with a private workshop in Death Valley. Then I went out to Vegas and did some light painting portraits for a couple of weeks. And here's my next group, another Death Valley clan with Cliff. And it was such a great experience. We went all over Death Valley, uh, sunrise to sunset, the stars. We might have driven them a little crazy, but they loved every second of it. No. Yeah, they slept all after the workshop. That's yeah, for sure. definitely. Uh, this is our past workshop. Uh, obviously, we had a little bit of a fallout because of the COVID, <laughs> yeah. COVID virus. Uh, some people just did it weren't safe traveling, and you know we had to, um, they, you know, respect that as well. But um, we kind of got this workshop in right under the radar as like mm. everything started to go bad. We had everything planned. They were with us, and we were able to complete the workshop and create an extra memorable trip for them yeah. before the COVID virus really took its grasp. But this is us in uh, Utah. So I have to ask, um, uh, when you were, um, all, right, two months, like, I figure two months before this, what, what was the last shoot you really remember before realizing, like, this is, things are changing? So it's hard for me to say that because I've been traveling since January. So, I mean, I was in Death Valley. I was in Vegas. I was never in front of a TV. I actually haven't watched TV since January. I don't have a TV when I'm traveling. That's and probably good you're missing the news. So I really yeah. get my TV from word of mouth, my news from word of mouth and also from the internet. But um, it was interesting because it was like in the local shops and like all around me when I started to hear the commotion, like this isn't just something little, you know, so it probably was the beginning of March when we were in Utah um, scouting for this trip that like things started to seem like they weren't going on track. Like this isn't just a little thing that's happening in the world. Yeah. Um, when did you first realize that it was actually changing around you. Like, like the first realization, like this is something very different. Sure. So I think that would have to be when they closed down the restaurants and the hotels while we were teaching our workshop. And thankfully they let the guests who were already at the hotel stay, but if you had not checked in, you couldn't. So that's when we kind of figured this is really serious, you know, and we're, we're in a small um, tourist town. So they didn't want spectators come this is their height of their season they thought everyone's going to come for spring break especially since colorado was closing down and they didn't want to bring the virus here so they they took preliminary um it's, yeah it started to get real because once they shut down the the ski slopes everyone in colorado decided well let's come to moab and moab's not prepared for this you know they have a very small hospital here it's basically just emergency medevacs and, and triage for people who you know hurt themselves on the rocks they're not prepared and they knew it. So they, they took proactive measures and rightly so. But uh, yeah, then we started our workshop attendees started getting emails from their flight saying, I don't know if I can get home, things are being delayed, restaurants are shutting down. Um, I was on an email every day, I was on a phone call every day with Japan, my project to my, my crew out in Europe at the time, deciding day by day by day. Um, are you leaving for Japan? Are we doing this two month film shoot out in Europe and Asia? And every day was updates, and every day was updates, and it was, it, the updates got worse and worse and worse. And so it just started getting more and more real when people couldn't get home. We realized that we probably weren't gonna get home. Um, so you, you're, you're basically out there, you, you still have guests and stuff like that. I'm gonna go back to the screen share now just so we can look at some more of your, your, your photos while we're talking. Yeah. Um, Yep, we were out there and all of a sudden, like, uh, I get a phone call from a, a friend who's a travel agent saying, hey, they might start, start stopping airline flights. And I kind of had to tell my guests, like, hey, guys, I know you guys are flying back just to let you know, like, this is what's going on in the world. Because we were out from sunrise to sunset with little communication with the real world, you know. Our experiences are really, you know, we're kind of remote out here. So we every night we'd, like, have, like, a come to t come to grips and like talk about reality and see how everyone's life is being affected and you know we were on, in our own little bubble until the end yeah. and well a couple of clients had to like figure out different ways to get home but you know everyone got home safe it, it certainly looks home. like you're in your own bubble here <laughs> this one is our <laughs> is that full screen Travis? i don't know on my end we can just it's see your whole desktop or yeah this was um this is the closing picture of our workshop we stopped at a dinosaur museum and it's actually my goal to go to the Dinosaur Museum because I think it's so funny. 
but we had our students pose and, and Cliff obviously got eaten by a dinosaur. <laughs> I, I take them for the team sometimes. <laughs> I, I like I like it's the dinosaur. Fun, you know, it's yeah. That's that's <laughs> the one thing that you know to me is we just call them experiences. We don't call them photoshops, but it's about it's about the experience, you know, and that's that's what we that's the primary objective. So yeah, we get amazing photos in beautiful places, but if you can't have fun doing it, what's the point? Right, and all so, our participants in the past two months have written us and been like, thank God we did the trip, thank yeah. God. And they're like, we look yeah. at the pictures and it's like their little bit of... Um, and they give us updates, uh-oh. <laughs> <Our background's laughs> That's what happens when the green screen goes yeah, bad, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the, the glory of live TV. <laughs> Sounds great. I don't know why I'm doing that, but now well, it's what we know that we know what you're <laughs> shooting when you're shooting. You do amazing light painting stuff like that. How when how did you get into so light painting and, and, and this kind of stuff? Sure. So um, besides travel, photography, and landscape, light painting is my true love. Um, I just love incorporating. Um, I like creating unique pictures. So I love starting with the blank canvas and creating lights and having beautiful models or beautiful subjects. It doesn't need to be models, but this was actually in that intermin between my workshops that I was out in Vegas for a couple weeks. And I just hired a bunch of models to come out to um, these sand flats. Actually, this is a mud, mud flats and uh, do these long exposure pictures. I use a bunch of different light sources, lightpaintingbrushes.com, Pro Photos, Lytra. Um, I just use a bunch of different lights to create this and I use an off-camera flash to sort of strobe them in at the end but I just love creating unique images and I feel like with light painting and um, you can do this yeah I mean it's just it's so much fun especially when you're in, in terrible locations like that I know yeah right here's another <laughs> one uh, using a Brillo pad and uh, a whisk we're able to create some fire the wonderful um, sparks and yeah sparks yeah i love that one and here's another model just using two simple lights running around like a lunatic which is typically what i do when i'm doing my light painting and um cliff can vouch <laughs> it's for that. scary everyone if you see their faces are like oh, don't trip what's going on but the images are cool. right so just two lights running around on the by amazing sky that night and that's i think there might have been a moon but i think that might be a lot of light from las vegas in the distance <laughs> Crazy how so you're, you're bringing your sourcing your models from Vegas and bringing them out there. Are they just typically coming out for a certain amount of hours and not an overnight? They just drive out and drive in? Yeah, just driving. This actually is um, about 40 minutes from Vegas, not even 30 minutes from Vegas. And I just had a bunch of miles come for one night and we just banged it out. I did it over a week, um, but I would just keep them rotating in and creating. And they loved it because people aren't familiar with light painting. And when they see the image, because they look at me like I'm crazy. And then they look at the back of my camera and they're like, what is this magic? So um, that's the best Well, I have part. to say in the, in the age of uh, social distancing, these seem like the type of shoots you could still have. I know, it's true. I've been thinking yeah. about yeah. it. And, and where did you find this next model? <laughs> Unfortunately, this is the only model I'm left with at the moment. <laughs> you definitely got the short end of the stick on this one. <laughs> so uh, I have, I've reached out to a couple models. They said they were quarantining at the, at the time and here in Moab. So this is my, my main model right now. He's very- well, what's, the, uh, what's the craziest no thing, you, thing you've made you, What's the craziest thing she's made you do so far? Oh my God, besides uh, break into and climb into a dinosaur mouth? Uh, there, there, there's actually several that I can't mention live. <laughs> we might get arrested. We can't talk about yeah, that. Yeah, these, these, these days are things that are tricky. Might want to take so, so we're going into a sort of a transition here uh, of, you, you know, you being able to uh, shoot and uh, work with workshops. And what was that kind of transition like where suddenly like, you know, like, oh, my God, I can't bring people out anymore. And like, what am I going to shoot? Like, how did you what was your inspiration to keep shooting? Or did was there you just kind of was there any thought process to it? Or are you just instantly like, no, I'm, I'm out in the beautiful thing. I'm going to keep shooting. I'm going to keep shooting. I'm just going to say, but we're actually being as um, safe as possible. We're in the middle of somewhere where there aren't many people. Um, and a lot of people are quarantining in Moab, but there's no rules against not recreation, recreating, right? Yeah. So we're out recreating. We're not re we're on like back county trails. The national parks are closed. So we're not going there. We're going to these little state parks and places that are off the beaten trail. And I'm getting to, to do shots I never would have dreamed of if I could would have been in New York. You know, obviously you can't be doing this in New York. So Cliff and I go every sunset and we do sunset photography. We, we set the time, we say, hey, we're leaving at this time, no matter what we're doing, we close up our computers and we go on a mini adventure. And uh, we know Moab like no other now. 
Yeah, the, the state and not, not the state parks, the national parks are definitely shut down. State parks depends on the location, the county. But there is so much beauty everywhere, honestly, that it's, it's been almost a blessing in disguise to, to discover all these new locations. Yeah. And there aren't many people out. And so it is a, it's a safe thing that we practice. We keep social distancing. We don't see anyone else on the trails. If you do see a few people, it's, it's a wave at a distance kind of a thing. Right. And one of the fun things I've been doing is um, using ND filters. So our background's really giving us a problem. <laughs> so, I think you just let it go. We just let it go. Construction paper to. Uh, we had a, a really jerry rigged uh, setup that worked well. But You're now working with a upgraded. huge studio space, so I don't know what the problems are. Yeah, we're <laughs> in a small corner of the RV here. Um, I've been getting you haven't converted the RV into a shooting studio yet, have you? Oh, it's a work, work in progress. It's a work in progress. <laughs> um, I've been doing it's the a real lot of exposure photography here and messing around with ND filters. I use BW filters, and this is a mixture of a 10 stop and a six stop. And what we've gained from being out here is time. I mean, yeah. you get epic yeah. clouds, epic sky when it's beautiful out. We go out and shoot, and we have that luxury that we normally wouldn't have. You know, normally when you're sitting at your desk at home working on projects, you look outside you're like it's so beautiful. I wish I could go. And now it's like I have no work to be doing except for projects on my own. Like you know, I don't have. Um, clients waiting on things, all of that's done. All my future work is in the future at the moment. And now is time for me, you know, now it's time for me to create. So I've been getting really creative with doing uh, night photography. The stars here are incredible. Um, and this is a mixture on the left of a star trail and a light painting of a waterfall, uh, just a composite taken at the same time. Um, I just like painted the, the, land, the water in at one, one shot and composed it over the star trail. But really amazing. I've thought about reworking this image three times. And that's also a blessing of being here. I can go back and reshoot that if I wanted. Normally, yeah. you don't have that yeah. opportunity. Yeah, especially so, when you're on workshops, you don't get the time to really shoot yourself right. ever. You're teaching yeah. or not be able to enjoy it all. And then uh, now you're kind of, you know, I... I I have to say, you know, I grew up in New York City and, and lived in many apartments and stuff like that. But now that I have a house about an hour outside the city, it's like I'm thankful every day that I have the space. And, you know, like you guys have literally walk out your door and talk about social distancing. You're not going to bump into anyone for miles. Right. Is that yep. the, yeah. So it, have you felt a huge disconnect that you aren't in the city? Like you, you're like, we, we're not really getting a grasp of what it really is like. And we have such a kind of unique feel where we are that you're not feeling what's really going on. Or have you felt that? I, I mean, I get that disconnect the second I board a plane, <laughs> right? So I, I, can, I can feel it immediately. The second I get on the other side of the GW bridge, I feel like I can breathe a little, right? So I, I understand that. And um, I guess for, for me, at least, I, I intentionally try not to take anything for granted. So you can imagine after three or four weeks doing this every single day, and every single, every single day is a unique adventure. Every single day is something we haven't seen before something we're trying new um, and it's not it's play for sure but we're also honing our skills working using different gear trying different techniques exploring new areas and using this as an opportunity to grow expand our skill set and and yeah it, it is not new york at all and you yeah. know for there's a couple of people in the chat that i know i've seen the projections and we're we're in touch with friends and family every day uh, back in New York. So we're, we're aware to the degree that we can be what's going on there, but it's a very different reality out here at the same time. So this is, this is sort of your view right now? <laughs> that tonight, it'll look like that. Well, the wonderful, thing about, the wonderful thing about this time. is it actually is not just a, a picture. <laughs> so yeah, this yeah. Is, I've been getting into doing time lapses as well, which I love. I mean, just being able to capture motion and the energy and show it to people, share with people. This is actually, I've been doing a lot of iPhone time lapses because it's so simple. It takes up less space on your camera and your computer and it's gorgeous. Just spending too much so, time. So this is an iPhone. This is an iPhone, yes. One so, of the best things you can ever have in your pocket, yeah. wouldn't you say Clifford? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> this is like a 15 minute drive from where we are right now. Too. That's incredible, incredible. And then you've uh, even gone into doing some uh, some more like how are you doing trying to do a couple a day now or yeah it depends on what's what the location is like if we have a cloudy day i'm out you see there. the clouds you're out there yeah totally <laughs> i mean there's so many things you could do you could use your filters and get a little blur you could use it to, to have your, your camera and do a time lapse 
Um, that's probably me running through my own shot, ruining it. it always <laughs> happens. Can't help myself. <laughs> there was another student of ours. Yeah, that's one of our workshops. Uh, so this is from our workshop. It was an incredible sunset. Uh, this is before the park closed. And this is my latest endeavors. I went back three times to get this video of the Milky Way rising over this mountain ridge. And I've learned so much just by repeat doing. I mean, how often do you get to repeat do an amazing shot that every time you say, if I only did this, I could get it better. So, Is but, this uh, still I, an iPhone? No, definitely not. No, I was about to say. And did you throw, <laughs> throw uh, some lights? Uh, where yeah, was, the, using the lights. Technically, I don't know. Could you? We'll no, you to, definitely we'll can't. <laughs> you definitely can't. I tried. We'll we'll that was with the Lytra light, uh, illuminated yep. at five percent the whole time. Um, just lighting up the mountain, so I could get that beautiful video. So th this one looks very fun. Why don't you tell me about this one? So I experiment with light painting, and not every light painting I do is perfect. So one night I was just experimenting with all my tools because I'm going to do a light painting tutorial on how to do light painting. So I have a lot of tools and some of them I can like whip out and do amazing things. Others, I'm just learning. So if you play this one, I am attempting to learn how to do an orb and um, a lot of repeat orbs I did in this one. And at the end of the night, I was just, it just became an experimental night where I ran through the frame. I used all my tools and just experimented. And this is what I feel like is fun about light painting. Everything's an experiment. And sometimes you get award-winning images. And if you keep trying, you'll like nail it. So that's what I was doing yeah. that night. Well, uh, it seems like you're doing some wonderful things. Now we're, we're going to go to a little cliff. Uh, wh where was your first camera? What was your first camera, Cliff? My first camera, it was a Canon S50, a little point and shoot, five megapixel, state of the art. Um, I waited until digital was a thing. I couldn't. Like I tried this like old film camera and I literally put it away and I waited until four or five megapixels seemed to be about the sweet spot and then I jumped in. <laughs> <laughs> Never looked back. So, so where did the passion come from and where did you when did you first kind of know like wait this is this is more than just uh you know something i'm just uh, fancying i want to do this as a career yeah uh i don't know if that ever really came as like this 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 moment it the passion came from travel which i didn't know i wanted to do either until after college and then my friend who i spoke yesterday sent me uh he was traveling to europe after college and his mom met her his father in in switzerland and so they were sending their son and she was like you know what just go i'll get your ticket just go you'll thank me later and that trip two or three months in europe right after school it changed my life it was it made me realize like there's so much to this world i want to share how do i do it and never even occurred to me photography and then once i picked it up i was like oh okay like i had a reason to pick up a camera which is to explore my curiosity and, and go to these places it wasn't just because I wanted to take a picture, it was because I wanted to see things. And the idea of taking a picture justified the reason to go see these things. So why don't you so tell me about this, this shot? Oh, so all these are iPhone pictures. So I always came, honestly, I, I got DSLRs and I have a bunch of them. Um, but that, that, that feeling that I had when I traveled first with that, that Canon S50, that point and shoot, I, I never wanted to go beyond that because everything else was more um, technical was more, it takes you out of the moment. What lands, what's my aperture, what's my shutter speed. So I focus like, where am I focusing? What's the hyperfocal? And like that, the, it incrementally it takes you out of that joy, that, that feeling of just being in the moment. And so I'm constantly trying to find the best way to stay inside that moment and to just have that childlike feeling, you know, really of just being there in awe. And so when I, I did a cross country road trip with my phone, uh, I've traveled all over the world with the iPhone now and the iPhone seems to be, seem to be and seems to be the best tool. That's literally mm -hmm. one click of a button and notice as few decisions, technical decisions I need to make, right? So I can focus on the really important decisions like the color, the light, the composition, the moment, all of those things, they become clear when you don't have to worry about everything else. So these are just, when, uh, yeah. Yeah, when you're getting images like this, it's pretty hard to, you know, say that, you know, if certainly the iPhone is so much fun and you feel so creative that you can just whip it out and do so many different things with it in your pocket and, and always have it there. But when you have a picture yeah. like this, uh, how much processing or what did you use to process this image or? Every, every image I, I, sh I share is processed and the process takes less than a minute usually because I use Lightroom. I've been, mm -hmm. Pretty proficient in Lightroom. I do a lot of training and work with students on that. 
And the beauty of Lightroom is everything you do once, you never have to do again. So if I get a look, I save it as a preset, I can copy it, yep. bring this something else. And so you get in this habit and after a while you start to see images not not for what they are, not for what they look like, but what they could look like. You know, yeah. and that, that translates into when you're standing in front of a scene and the immediacy of this, because you have a phone, I can do this while I'm standing there and then share it with someone on this beautiful screen. And it makes the whole process, the immediacy of this uh, and the joy of it. It's been, it's been just a really fun ride. So you tell me every image that we're about to show is iPhone? Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That's so it. this is uh, working with uh, an organization called Big Like. I was out in East Africa for a while, kind of living off the grid too, but in a tent, didn't have my RV with me at the time. <laughs> and uh, this is just we climbed this, this giant rock and this guy was just standing there. I never met him. I had a, a, a driver with me that was translating and the light was getting low and I was just like, just stand there. You know, and it's intimidating if you take out a big camera and, and here it was just, you're just in the moment. He was he barely even noticed. We had a laugh. We were kind of pointing and and then just moved on really you know it's it's nice and fun to to climb around the rock especially out here uh <laughs> with, you know with no backpack with with nothing you know water bottle maybe <laughs> so I, i'm gonna usually i would say some of these questions for a little later but i'm gonna ask right now since you are as excited i am as seeing the world and photographing the world um how are you handling this right now in terms of uh kind of like feels like the world is kind of closed down at the moment and you can't go to these places and, and trips that you know from Japan and stuff like that are on hold. And like, is it, is it really hitting you hard yet? Or is it uh, sort of like, I'm um, still, cause we have these moments of kind of feeling like stages of grief or something like that. And right. You know, when I first kind of went through like all of this, I instantly like, well, how can I help the community and uh, what can I do? And I, I threw myself into creating shows and uh, this was birthed through it. And uh, suddenly then, you know, as the weeks went on and the gravity of it kind of went on, I'm like, wait, we're not getting back to any kind of old normal. It's going to be this new normal. And I'm starting to feel like, wow, I don't know that all those trips I was going to take, they're on hold for a long time. Like, how are you dealing with this as, a, as someone who builds your business on travel and, and bringing groups to these locations and, and shooting them? I mean, at first, it was a big hit, right? Because I had a two-month shoot through Asia and Europe planned. You know, that was my income. You know, I canceled all of my plans, all of my work. Uh, that was where I was going to live and shoot and make an income. And that was a big project that just dried up in a phone call with this. And so that was like a stark reality of, of where this is heading. And then sure enough, other shoots came in just like you, um, where all of a sudden your calendar kind of clears up. Um, but at the same time, honestly, uh, I'm not really, I'm not disappointed. I'm not, it's, it's been an eye-opening experience in, in, in a very engaging and motivating and inspiring way, honestly. Yeah. Um, we got our, our background back. <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, it's, it, that's the way I look at it is much like you. It's how can I help the community? How can it, it, it's the focus has shifted tremendously and that I have that same amount of passion I've realized this over the last few years of teaching and inspiring and helping others and giving back maybe yeah. even more so than even that love for travel and so this is a, is a beautiful opportunity to help others and myself in the process kind of reinvent do find whatever that new normal is work with photographers to figure out how do you generate income at a distance how do you um, deliver images. How do you make money as a photographer in this new world? How do you add value to people's lives with what we do? And that's been just an amazing experience and endeavor and a challenge and a, and a beautiful challenge at that. So I don't feel anything about what I've lost. It's, it almost feels like what I've gained through this. Is yeah, I have to say that's a beautiful, beautiful way to look at it. And talking about beautiful, tell me about this picture. Yeah, that was three days living out of a car on the west coast of Ireland, dangling my feet off the cliff, which you <laughs> you don't see in this image, uh, just in case my mom is watching. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> mom would have a heart attack. Day. So working with, with Apple and, and doing some other things and working on different platforms, I've, you know, when you're just walking around with your phone in your pocket, you start to really understand the platform or just working with any platform. So I've gradually been trying to push the limits of what I can do with this device that everyone has, right? So I've been expanding what's possible. So this is a stitched HDR Pano raw DNG file using Adobe Lightroom. And so I found ways to just 
handle the, all the obstacles that are traditional inside of mobile photography, right? How do you handle dynamic range? How do you handle resolution? How do you handle field yeah. of view? How do you handle noise and all of that? And so a lot of these are, are stitched HDR panos. I have several different apps, bracketing, sequencing shots, uh, the capture of the field of view and the dynamic range and stitching back together, all of them Lightroom because what's the point of, of doing all this work and then shooting with your phone and making more work for yourself. So it becomes real simple when you, you understand the tool set in Lightroom. And I show people how to do that too, because you know my, the best gift I can give people and most of my students is time. If I can right. give them their time back, um, I take that very seriously. You know, that's a real yeah. value. That's the only resource we ever have. So I think it's one of the most important things, I think, because it took me ages to find what I wanted to do in life. And photography for me was later in life. And I, you know, I did a lot of things. I worked in film and TV. I worked on, on making movies and then I owned nightclubs and bars. I just was not never ultimately happy. So once I found photography, I, I literally was like reborn. It was like I f wake up happy every day. And if I can bring someone to that happiness and help share and anything that I've learned, that's why I'm chairman of American Photographic Artists. That's why I teach, you know, and I do Adobe tutorials. And that's why, you know, do uh, stuff with Sony. And that's why I want to give back as much because, you know, you find that happy place. It's like, it's, it doesn't get any better than that. And it doesn't matter sort of where you are as long as you can continue to do that. Um, so what exactly. are you doing we've, we've now? Parallel lives to a degree in that regard. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that. And Susan said, Great, Susan yeah, said I would say you and I would get along. <laughs> it's, it's so funny how that works. But it's, for me, it's not about the photography at all. That's just the medium that I can use to connect to people. Yeah. And I, that's the beautiful thing, yeah. yeah. So this so you, is on you tell, me, you tell me this is an iPhone picture too? Yeah, this is during the last You kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so I'm a Sony shooter. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it, it's such a funny, it makes me feel like a kid again, literally yeah. running around. And you'll see this eventually. I'll, I'll share this with, uh, with the group when this comes out. But this is during the last big shoot I did in the fall with, in Italy with the iPhone photography school. And so we're doing this uh, iPhone landscape mastery course. It'll be, we're still editing it, you know, day by day, week by week. I had a, a Zoom call with them in Europe uh, yesterday. And so the idea was how to capture and inspire everyone to just go and shoot with whatever tool you have. It doesn't have to be an iPhone. It doesn't have to be a phone at all. Just, yeah. there's no excuses to go out and just truly enjoy the beauty of life, whatever that is for you, whether that's food, whether that's people, whether that's nature. And, but there's no excuses to it. And so if you can go out and do this with the phone, you can go out and do it with anything. And, and so that's what we captured for a month in Italy before this whole thing shut down. That's what I was supposed to be doing starting in Japan and in Spain and in Greece before this thing, you know, really shut the world down. So I'm very much looking forward to get back to that. Uh, we had such a blast filming this too. We had two camera crews, uh, drone operators, we had producers, directors, and the team of us we were like little kids, literally running around. They just get the drone out. They're like, just run up this valley, run up this ravine. And I'm just like out of breath, panting, sweating, getting all these photos. And they're like, where do you get the energy? And I was like, what do you mean when I get the energy? Look where we are right now. Look what we're doing. This is like, this is, I'm living my dream every day. I don't need caffeine. I don't need sugar. I don't need anything. Just put me in this beautiful spot. And, and I get that same feeling every time I walk outside the RV here. The same yeah. exact Where's this one? Uh, this is in the Alps de Suisse in Italy too. That's another shot we took. Mm -hmm. So we did sunrises and sunsets, but much like Susan and I, we were doing sunsets here because from a filming perspective, you, it's, it's a climax when it comes to the sunset rather than an anti-climax starting with the sunrise. Uh, this is one of the highest alpine meadows in Italy. And uh, what an amazing experience. We had wild horses running around. We were jumping over fences. Fun little fact, um, the first week we were there, you know, we can take the cable cars up, but then they closed them down. So we had to finish up the shoot. So we had a hike up from the valley. This took hours. They were very long days. And honestly, it was the most rewarding, hardest work I've ever done. And the most fun by far. Uh, but look oh. at that. I mean, with the phone. Come the on. colors are beautiful. Though. Is this a pano as well? Yeah, it's a stitched HDR pano. So to shoot the HDRs, uh, I use Lightroom Mobile. And so, because just, you know, a little side note, it's, you can't really shoot in the native camera app and get the dynamic range you can because yeah. you can't shoot raw files. Do you so use any accessories on your iPhone or, or is it just iPhone straight? 
I try not to. Uh, now that I'm using the the 11 Pro, we got that you know just before we we went to Europe. Um, there's three cameras: you have a 13 millimeter, you have a 26, you have a 52. I like to get a telephoto. We're expecting on the next one, but having a 13 millimeter and then to be able to switch over to a wide angle and then a normal, just with the tap of your finger. It, you but know, no NDRs or anything like that. Little things to put over your lenses or. I, I have all the moment lenses. Yep. Um, I've tried all of them. And do you need them? I feel like there's a there's a diminishing return. You know, there's so tell me about return. tell me about this one. So this is at the the tip of Dead Horse Point, and you know I don't work with black and white a lot, but when you have these moody clouds that come in and they race towards this this lookout point, um, just removing sometimes the color just lets you focus on what the light is doing. If you saw the before and afters, it'd be kind of eye opening <laughs> too. Um, I love showing people the before and afters too because it, it's mind blowing. So, where's your light coming from on this one? Uh, the light is coming from behind and to the right, kind of scraping through the scene. So, I'm shooting from the shadows. And when I can, I always try and shoot from the shadows. So it just gives you more depth and dimension if you, can, if you can handle it. And, you know, the new iPhones handle it really well, especially if you're either bracketing or shooting raw. Um, the new HDR modes, even in the native camera app, is yeah. incredible. You know, it's, it's really, it's such a fun experience. So is this coming to some of the stuff you're working on now, or is it we still sort of in the bridge period here? This is, I shot this a few days ago as we were filming this uh, 21 questions for B&H that I've just posted yesterday. And like while Susan's filming me on the iPhone, by the way, <laughs> on a gimbal, I'm shooting this and talking. So I figured this be kind of like a fun shot to, to bring you guys into, into, you know, what we're doing out here. And literally, you can see in the video, if you go, if you go Google 21 questions, I just, yeah. I sit down for a second, I'm, I'm still talking, I grab the shot, and then I just run around on the rocks again. That you can <laughs> talk crazy. running up a mountainside was impressive, but also the camera work was even more impressive. Thank you. The camera work was, yeah, that, I wasn't even looking show. where I was running to the left. <laughs> that, was, was that was a lot more impressive. So if people want to see the B&H 21 questions, it's, it's, it's very yeah. well done. Check it out, but it just gives you an insight into, you know, the joy. If you're just carrying this big tripod and you're on this shot and you take one beautiful photo, that photo could not be beautiful enough to... to to compensate for all the things I'd want to run around and shoot and get different compositions and just, and just play. And it, well, this is just a, a horrible picture and it's just a terrible view. And I just, there's nothing good about <laughs> it. I can say it at all. <laughs> grand view overlook out in uh, Northern Canyonlands that's shut down right now. Absolutely gorgeous. So is this uh, still, a, a, is this current? Did, did you shoot this recently? Uh, yeah, that's just right around the corner. Is it Dead Horse Canyon? Yeah, Dead Horse Canyon. And this is, uh, this is during our last workshop. We were playing around with uh, Profoto, their C1 Plus lights, because it gives you this off-camera flash. And, uh, and just the lighting, you know, being able to introduce, that was the one thing that we were missing with mobile photography, was how do you introduce light on demand? How do you create magic on demand? Otherwise, you're a part-time photographer. And so are you playing with uh, the Profoto uh, lights for the iPhone, or are you experimenting yeah. with those? Yeah, I experimented with a lot of different lights and the pro photos were the one that really brought off camera flash to the party and the yeah. app and everything else. And so we had this model, we had the, this is during our workshop and everyone's like, wait, what, what's going on right now? And I couldn't believe it. You know, it's just, it's just a beautiful thing to be able to introduce light with your phone and put one in one pocket, one in the other. And uh, now my drone fits in the third pocket <laughs> and cause the Mavic mini and it's crazy just to be able to run around and, what a beautiful time we live in. You know, it's a strange thing to say that, but as a creator, even if you're not photographing right now, like there's so many things we'd be creating, like what you're creating with Open Talk, what, what you're doing with APA, there's so many different ways uh, that we can use our skill sets to help people. And that's inspiring me more than even seeing these beautiful locations out here. I think having the ability of this time that we've all been gifted to utilize education and develop our skills. I think that's the true blessing in all of this. Yeah, to figure out how to put a green screen up. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're still all of that. Yeah, it's, so it's this all a learning curve. 
This brings us up sort of to the present. And uh, I have some questions for you that I usually ask of my, uh, my guests. But also, I want to throw it out to anybody that's listening right now. Uh, we do have a, uh, a, the Q&A panel. So if you have questions, I, I would uh, love for you to throw them in there. We have Jessica in the background kind of watching these questions coming in. And uh, we'd love for you to uh, ask anything uh, that you might uh, want to know. And uh, it's open talk. So we'll pretty much talk about anything and everything. Um, uh, and, and, and we'll talk about the falling green screen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of but, tape are we using? Uh, the wrong kind the real of tape. Tape. Gonna have to, it's not the right yeah. tape. <laughs> so when you're saying, you know, uh, that, that you're keeping busy and all that, uh, I mean, I know a lot of people out there are getting to stages here that uh, start people, I saw it last week, people were starting to freak out. There was cracks, people want to, they're getting stir crazy, they're getting really scared about money. They're like, you guys run and have run communities and workshops, and uh, I know you've been involved with, uh, you know, photo organizations. When people talk to you, like, I'm freaking out, wh what kind of advice do you give them? Like, what kind of hope do you give them that's like, you know, because the world's changing and I don't, we're coming back to a new normal. And I think people are starting to realize that. And some people, you know, honestly may not come out of this as a photographer and some may. What, what are you saying to people? It, it's, a, it's a tricky thing. You know, it really is. Um, some people maybe shouldn't be coming out of this as photographers if they don't want to. You know, find something else like this that, that does give you, let's be honest, more comfort. If, if, but for those people that this is who they are, and you'll know this is who you are, like there's just no way you're going to do anything else, you're going to figure this out. And, I, and it inspires me to, to work with people on an individual basis to help them do that. And everyone is going to have their own path. If you, you can interview a hundred photographers and that kitty that's in the scene and you can say, what's, what's, what's your path? You know, how did you He's get started? A guest appearance. Everyone's going to give you a different answer how they get started and everyone's going to have their own different <clears> path on how they move forward. And it's, it's going to be a total reinvention for all of us. But I, I really do think that just like we're doing this right now, right? If we were having this conversation on a panel in New York city, we get 50, 100 people to show up and it'd be this community. And we, we, but we've done this with projections mm -hmm. and you'll see this with projections out live that now we have this ability to reach a global audience. And now we have this global audience that's learning how to reach us. And what does that mean for, forget about this notion of being a photographer. What does that mean for being a content creator? What does that mean for being an artist? Maybe we have to reinvent or relook at what it means to be an artist. How do we add value to the lives of others? And as others learn to connect virtually, um, there's gonna be, a, I think it's gonna be a golden age of how we connect with each other instantly around the world and we find new ways of doing it. And we're at the forefront of that. Every day is new. Every day is trying to figure out how to put a green screen up, how to run a Zoom call, how to, how to take your DSLR or your phone that I, I can figure out to use wirelessly as a webcam whatever that is, but it's, it's shaking out and there's going to be, there's certainly going to be an opportunity, like definitely keep your head up. There's going to be more opportunities than ever for those people who are willing and wanting to learn how to connect with people and find new ways of adding value. I think there's going to be a lot of new ways. I had a really interesting call with BNH today. We both did uh, about doing just that, sharing and showing people, you know, what we're doing, how do we do it? How do we connect with the rest of the world? And now we're all on this platform, no matter where we are in the world, to be able to do that. Um, it'll be an interesting ride. I'm happy to be on it, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I certainly think that uh, we're not coming back to what we knew. And, and I think the industry is no, absolutely changing. But that means the playing field has once again been leveled, you know, wherever, you know, everybody was an influencer and now, you know, you know, and now that, uh, you know, if you didn't get in early on Instagram, you, know, you didn't get those million dollar million followers and all that stuff. Now it's going to be the people that are really kind of pioneers and recreating the format and what's going to be the future of photography. And that's, that's a high demand on people, you know, where people were just getting comfortable, like, wow, this is my year. I finally got this brand, this brand, that brand. Suddenly they have to figure it all out again. And that's, yeah. that's devastating for some. And, you know, I think people, even if they, you know, if it's their passion and soul to be a photographer, suddenly like, well, I have a kid to feed and I have this and like, what's more important, feeding my kid or, you know, my passion for photography. So this is a very scary, uncertain time. Yeah. Um, and I, it's, I, you know, I, I try and always say be positive. And once I said waking up positive doesn't mean like I'm going to go out and this is going to be the best day ever. This is going to say there's going to light at the end of the tunnel. And yeah. 
how do you explain to someone what the future is going to look like? What do you think the future is going to look like? Where do like do people right now just focus in on doing their webs, you know, and, and knowledge, or should they reach out to people, or uh, what? What does the industry look like, you know, in your eyes coming out of this? I think a little bit of all those things. I mean, in order to get ahead of everything, you should be networking. You should be taking care of your family. You should be thinking about what will people need at the end of this, like. I mean, think about photography, event photography, that's going to be different. You know, you're going to have a whole bunch of different logistics you're going to have to plan out and uh, different contracts, different everything, because who knows what the event world will look like. Um, so I think in order to move forward, you have to think about every realm of your business and what will be needed at the end of this. And I don't actually have the answer to that. I don't know what the future holds for photography. I'm curious, you know, every day I, I think something different, but like the online presence is important. Staying in communication with your clients, seeing how they're doing is something I've been doing, reaching out to them. Um, I've noticed a, a lot of clients now have time to do wedding albums. So I'm designing more wedding albums than usual. Um, but it's an interesting world we live in. I don't have the answers for you yet, but yeah. we'll see. I think yeah. it's I would add to that too, not to, you know, um, not to add too much to it, but that I don't want to minimize that either. Like there are bills to pay. There are very real practical issues that, that, you know, we're facing uh, that the world's facing and sure. It's one thing to be inspired. It's another thing to, to make money and put food on the table for sure. And, that uncertainty is it's there and it just has to be acknowledged. And I think to a degree, we have to get comfortable with that uncertainty. And if you can get to that point, um, I, I'm just throwing everything out there. And like Susan's saying, your network, um, your clients, I was on the phone a few days ago and I had a client that we were talking about doing a project and she's like, we're, we want to do this. This is how we want to do it. And she just started crying because she's like, I just want to make sure you guys are okay. And, and if there's a human element to this that I'm connecting with clients that are, um, it's just such a more real, honest, open conversation that starts every email and every dialogue with, first and foremost, how are you? How is your family? How yeah. is your life? And when you connect with people like that, I think we're all going to pull each other out of it. And it has to be, it has to be true empathy, not this, Hey, you know, we are looking at, we want to see how you're doing with COVID-19, all these emails right. and you know, marketing is like, you can tell immediately when it's like this forced chain email, if it's, if it's honest yeah. and someone just reaching out just to be honest, I think that's when it makes the difference. And if you we're, don't do it that way. Yeah. We were right. talking to B and H and we spent the first 10 or 15 minutes talking about building forts for his kids in his apartment. Like there's a, there's a human element that you're going to see everywhere. And that's yeah. the first place to start with your clients, your friends and family is to build that element and have that at the forefront and people are going to come along. What can I do for you? How can I help you? How can you help me? How can we really build together from an honest and open place? And I think that's a, that's going to be a beautiful thing. It's already a beautiful thing to witness from a more practical standpoint. I'm looking at every, and we talked about this briefly, but I'm looking at every technology that I can use right now. I, I've contacted, uh, a digital frame company recently about finding ways that um, I'm always trying to figure out how I can empower artists. So that's what projections.live uh, is doing. And, and maybe you should talk about that in a few minutes, but any way where I can find ways. So building websites for photographers, finding a way that their supporters can support them by purchasing prints. And this, this digital frame, for instance, is how can you create a page where, how do you create an object where someone can just look at your work and support what you're doing directly how can the artist yeah. be supported directly by their fans by their friends by their family by their loved ones without having that job without having a client to give them that income how do we directly connect with the people who want to support us that's going to be a really interesting dialogue to have as a community and as just an industry as we move through this and those connections personal professional and everything in between are going to be paramount into who's going to come out of this and who is it so a question, uh, uh, having dealt with, you know, uh, uh, corporations like Apple and Adobe and uh, B&H and stuff like that, where are you seeing that you were a couple months ago and what are they, what are they asking for? Are their needs pivoting to now? And 
do you, are they are they asking for work or how is that translating and you know it's it's you know the the future of this is like uncertain and we don't know like what these clients you know i know certainly so i used shot a lot for nbc that they they scaled back and fired a lot of crew and cut their budgets immensely and we're coming back to stuff that's very different what are you seeing uh, demands and asks from you or in the industry in general I, I actually i flip that entirely and i start with the uncertainty you know where are you guys do you guys have a plan what's and and then i try and build from there it's, all right can we figure this out together right. because a yeah. lot of them don't know right. and and if you have that trust with with your clients whatever it, whoever it is then you can have that dialogue with them. It's like, okay, where are you? What can we do together? How can I help you? This is what I suggest. And it's almost like a, like a brainstorm. And I've been having day after day brainstorms with all these people. How do we best approach us? And that's what we had with b &H. That's what I had uh, with, with Adobe, with, with uh, several different clients. Is how do we approach us in a way that leaves everyone a winner, that empowers everyone, that, that gives them real value and starting with that uncertainty and, and honesty and authenticity in that conversation is, is, is a really interesting way to start it. I think it's a great question is what are your needs? Because I mean, yeah. everyone's needs are so different right now. So if you talk to your clients and say, well, are you looking to have more digital content? Okay, well, guess what? We could do online content. Do you need more stories written or do you need more um, text for your website? You know then yeah. you can yeah. build on that, you know, it's good to know what they need and then you can fill, meet their needs. There's a greater need for content now than ever. You know, if there's a yeah. silver lining to this, there's something to keep in mind. There's a bigger need for content now than ever. And we can produce um, it anywhere we are if we have an I, internet connection. I think what you brought up is an extremely, extremely important point. And I think it's, it's sort of the key to this is, is that honest reach out to people is like, all right, what do you need and how do we help each other? And uh, okay. understanding that right now it may not be about money, but how do we, you know, in the future we'll get there, but what do we do now to, to make sure we, we support each other and uh, get through this? Um, uh, we're going to open up, to, uh, I think Jessica, if we have any questions there, let me know. Um, hey guys. Yeah, we do. Um, okay. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right. So our question, uh, first question is from Charles Chesler asking what, if any, are your favorite go-to apps? Um, to use with the phone and we already heard Lightroom, but any others you can share? Well, Cliff is a light, is an app guru, so <laughs> I don't know if you want to ask him that question. Oh, that Charles, what, you what, up what, kind of what, you, what did you say? What are some of your, your, your fun, problem. what are your go-to apps that really, uh, you, you like, definitely... <laughs> these are all, each one of these, by the way, like these are just camera apps and yep. I have multiple screens. So the what first are some of the ones that uh, you, you, you always go to? Like, you know, these are the yeah. top three that uh, will, will definitely touch my pictures at some point. Like, if yeah. you the lost those three, app, you'd be like, uh-oh, where are they? <laughs> the, the, the very first app is the native camera app on my phone. Uh, I always start there because that's, that's what this all comes down to is the simplicity of it. I yeah, your phone to, comes with that one. Phone. People want to know what the ones you download. <laughs> the photo pills is my favorite yeah, one because we're always scouting one. where's the sun going to rise, where's the sun's going to set, where's the Milky Way going to rise. Literally, I walk around with photo pills open all the time just looking where the stars are going to be and where the North Star yeah, is to see fine. where it's going. So that's my favorite. And photo then the, pills. Uh, uh, Snapseed and Adobe Lightroom. Uh, Adobe Lightroom is a natural second. If I'm not using it as a native camera, but instead of the native camera, because I can shoot the HDR raw, to quickly process something, it, it's so intuitive and easy to use. And Snapseed is another one that um, is Snapseed is one of my go-to favorites. And mm -hmm. here's, here's one. I don't know if you know this one. Lenka, it's a black and white camera uh, yeah. emulator. It's one of Lenka? the coolest black Lenka. and white. L-E-N-K-A. Yeah. Got it. It's, uh, it, it takes black and white pictures that, were, that just are insane. It just The look of them is just... It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's fun. It just makes it fun again. You know, it, it's, it's yeah. inspiring to. It allows you to be creative in one place. I mean, everything's on the phone. You can go from one app seamlessly to the yeah. next. It's just, it's, a, it's a, that fun, creative thing that uh, I, I always said, you know, when you start out as a photographer, there's so much fun and joy in it. And then you start understanding like, wow, this camera is technical and stuff like that. And, and that one circle of creativity, suddenly the second circle of like, oh, my settings, do I do ISO, do I this, do I do that? And, and suddenly you're so grasping for the technical that that creative circle just goes out of whack. And it takes you so far to get 
once you get that technical mastery down that you forget about it, that suddenly you can sync up that creative circle again. And that's where you need to get to. And that's uh, where that the iPhone makes it so much fun and creative because you just go out and shoot and enjoy it. Right. And if you want to be, you know, manual, you, it has the capability to do it. Do we have another question? Yeah, I always said the, the camera that you have in your pocket is the best yeah. camera, but it's not. It's a camera that makes that one, you want to shoot. Yeah, and that one, it literally fits in your pocket, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we have another question from Thomas Kelly. How are you sync? How are you syncing the iPhone to Pro Photo? How am I syncing? So Pro Photo has their own app, and so with the second I, I haven't seen, and really, there's something to be learned from other uh, manufacturers. The second you turn on that Pro Photo light, it your it the app pops up. It syncs instantly. It is the most seamless process because it can be such a pain. You're like, oh, let me turn the camera on. You know, there's a lot of camera companies that can learn from this, but it's like a whole like process and you have to stand on one foot and you've got to turn in a circle and hopefully it syncs. This syncs like instantly the second you turn it on and it just works the way an Apple product works. It just, you turn it on and it works. It's so simple. I don't even have to explain it. You just turn it on and it will sync. Nice. And our last question from Don Rose, are you devising new classes at this point or is it too soon to start thinking in that direction? Well, we have some uh, schedules for October, even uh, as August, you know, we're going to even July. So we're waiting to see how this all kind of pans out. Um, but definitely, I'm hoping the October ones are going to be happening because we have an amazing October lineup. Yeah. Um, we're going to do a fall foliage chase starting in Nova Scotia, heading to Acadia and Bar Harbor, wake, making our way down to Vermont. And we're going to be inviting students to come along for the ride. So um, we're hoping that everything will be clear in the next couple months to continue with that plan. And then our 2021 schedule we're building all the time. Why not? You know, we're hoping things will be good by then as well. And then we're working on some online classes. So Cliff is going to be working on the Lightroom uh, boot camp. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of training coming out, and I think you know people as people get more comfortable to to learning from their screen, and if they're not, they're going to be soon. And so really, if you have something to share, you, you can film it, you can record it. And that's another great way, you know, for the photographers that are listening to, to generate income is to, you, you'll find your audience if you have a skill set that you can share with other people and that will add value. So one of the things that I do is Lightroom, born from this, the very same reason why I shoot with the phone, is I want to find the easiest, simplest, most intuitive possible way, most efficient way to do things so we can focus on the creative aspect. And so I, I figured out through the years of working with students and Adobe, um, to do just that. And so I do boot camps uh, back in New York quite a bit, and now we're going to take them, you know, virtual and uh, just offer this out to the community that now we actually have those rainy days to go back and look at our images. Which ones can we edit? How do we edit? How do we share that? How do we build a website in a way where we can have a gallery, where we can have automated order fulfillment and delivery to the doorstep of people who want to pay for our, for our images? I walk people through that entire process from the second they press the shutter to they take the memory card out through the second that the client puts in their credit card info and give them an actual solution that will empower them to, to generate income no matter where they are. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Uh, it's not complicated at all once it's set up. Awesome. And where, where can people find that those virtual classes and, and offerings? I'm going to type this into the chat for everyone. Yeah, it just if you Google my name, Clifford Pickett, but my website's cliffordpickett.com. Um, we're working right. on a few now. And then Susan Magnano. Um, you can go to my website for in-person workshops, it, which is Photor Adventures. That's P-H-O-T-O-U-R adventures.com. And hopefully I'll be working on a Lightroom, um, not Lightroom, a light painting tutorial. Yeah. So um, we're going to be working on that while we're out here. So awesome. stay tuned for that and as well. And some things will be coming up on b and pages soon as well. That's what we were discussing. So Monday will be the first of uh, Lightroom Live series I'll be doing once a week, kind of training people, getting a community around, giving them like real world solutions and tips and advice about how to deal with, with the issues that they face because everyone is going to be facing different technical challenges. And uh, honestly, just reach out to us. That's yeah. the best way to do it. Just shoot us an email, just cliff at cliffordpicket.com or Susan at Photo Adventures and follow us on Instagram, Susan underscore Magnano. Yeah. And it's not about, you guys are rounding up the episode with the plugs. Uh, we're going to get to that. Well, not about we're going to get to that. Really is, Before like, we, we get to that, why don't we, share, why don't we share a video or something that you guys gave Oh, yeah, me. totally. Let's, oh, let's really. go there first. <laughs> 
So guys, this is a little bit about what we do every day. Um, if it moves smoothly. Yeah, this is a stop motion of C. <laughs> it's gonna be a little uh, choppy on it Zoom, like but uh, you'll get an idea. And when we, when we yeah. put it back on uh, YouTube, we'll make sure that we load up the, uh, the good video. This is yeah. a day in the life of Susan and Cliff in Utah. It's so beautiful here. Uh, I know where I'm going when I get to travel again. We've That's been talking insane. with the Moab um, community about helping them out since we yeah. kind of live here now. So we have a meeting with the community board to see how we can help local businesses. So we're not just having yeah. fun here. We really want to kind of meet the community and become part of them, become a local, you know. This so, is all shot on the iPhone, too. Just an awesome no, I think it's shot on a van. Yeah. <laughs> it's shot, shot on a van, too. <laughs> It likes to stand on cars. That's before we got the RV, before we upgraded. <laughs> this is the same video again. This Here's looks different. Yeah. So this is a White Rim Trail. This is, um, it's closed down now as part of Northern Canyon Lens. Very famous, uh, incredibly scary road to drive. So we hired a professional. This is the director of search and rescue out here, uh, <laughs> where he was. And so we just kind of, it, we were like kids running out, Hanging climbing outside on the roof, of the truck. just with their phones and just, uh, it felt like, it felt like just being a little kid again, just enjoying the sunshine, enjoying the day, enjoying where we are, just enjoying, just enjoying. You can't say where this is. That's <laughs> crazy. I get in trouble. <laughs> Look at that crazy guy taking a picture. Yeah. So if anything, we hope to inspire you guys that this is gonna, this is gonna we're gonna get through this and then you guys are gonna be on crazy adventures and you're yeah. all gonna be welcome to come join us, but. And these places aren't going anywhere. They'll be, they'll be here, they'll be here for a while. So work on that skill set. work on your techniques, work on that digital catalog. So when this whole thing does open back up again, uh, and they're talking about doing it sooner than you think, much sooner than you think actually. Um, that's, that's just beautiful and inspiring. Yeah, go out there. So we're getting to the last couple of questions here. Um, and so at the end of the day, I mean, it's it, usually I'd ask a question, uh, how do you, you know, find your Zen place each day? And uh, what do you do to de-stress yourself and get away from the news? You've already done that. You're out, you're just f so far out from, you know, and, and in the and beautiful peace and, and away from it all. But are, do you find yourself doing new things each day that uh, you didn't do before? Like, you know, I'm going to go out and uh, take that extra time to have a cup of coffee or do uh, Pilates or something Zen or what do you find yourself doing now that you didn't do before? So before this, yeah. I never lived with Cliff. So <laughs> I didn't have a green screen that fell down every second. But we yeah. actually start our day every morning with meditation and setting our intentions and our goals. Typically, it consists of trying to um, trying saying, to fix the screen screen. <laughs> trying to fix the, okay. This is all you, Susan. This is on your side. Okay. And you I'm just happy. pull it down at this point. I'm just happy pull with that sucker it. down. Oh, it's right there, close. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, meditation uh, is one every single morning. Uh, there's an app. Here's another good app. Calm. Uh, yes. So Start that, and that's it. Sets your intentions for the day. I really think because a lot of us don't have an organized schedule, we don't report to work anymore. If you make a list of like three things you want to accomplish, then you'll stay on track. Because I've been sometimes when you don't have a schedule, you will just go off in every direction, and nothing gets done by the end of the day. So we like to set a goal. These are the three things we'd like to accomplish today, and then and then, routine. And then we do. Uh, so I was doing the Swan. We we're learning Tai Chi from from a Tai Chi master, which happens to be our host out here. Um, so that's something certainly I never thought. I thought I'd be filming, uh, you know, the next installment of a landscape mastery course Travis, on an iPhone in Japan. Travis, the video of <laughs> No, 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 don't, 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 you better not. Uh, but yeah, that's, never thought I'd be, you know, living in an RV, driving a pickup and doing Tai Chi in the morning. Life changes, but having this little bit of, of a routine to hold on to. Yeah. And starting the morning with, you know, what are our intentions for the day? And then every night it ends with, what have we accomplished? It, two things, actually. What are we grateful for? Five That's things important. we're grateful for every single day. Every single day before we go to sleep. What are we grateful for? And what have we learned? Yeah, I think and if you don't stay motivated and busy, it's easy to let the demons and, and the fear creep in. So I think it's it's okay to take some time off and to, to do certain things and, and, and just let yourself kind of 
absorb it all. But I think the more you uh, make that plan and, and, the, and wake up. And, and one of my earliest uh, guests uh, said uh, one of the best things she heard was when she wakes up uh, to the first thing to do is to create and not consume. And I, and, and that just keeps replaying in my head how many times we wake up in the morning. The first thing we do is turn on the news or the first thing we do is check the email. The first thing we yeah. do, it's, go out and do something, whether it's, you know, taking a sunrise or, you know, or take a little time to do something, you know, that you don't new, normally do something craft worthy or something, or a piece of photography yeah. or something that's for you to create. It can be anything, a, a moment of, you know, taking calm or, you know, uh, using headspace or any apps like that. I think it's so important. What are you in this missing the most? Well, we're out here. I miss my family. I miss yeah. my parents. I miss my brother. I kind of, I miss them because I don't get to see them. We talk occasionally. I miss my friends. Um, but I guess we'd all be quarantined anyway. So it would be kind of like, I could be anywhere. But I miss that, that hug for my parents or just like being able to see people that I love. I have been able to do it digitally, which is okay, but it's not the same. And for you, Cliff, what do you, what do you find yourself missing at the moment? Yeah, that sort of like feels like it's been taken away from you, and when you get it back, you're gonna that's one of the first things you're gonna do. Oh, I mean, just instinctually, I would have said rainbow cookies, but we we got those. <laughs> no, honestly, I think it's um, what I miss the most is having an in-person conversation and seeing someone smile. You know, yeah. with these masks on, you don't see you don't see that smile that you can bring out of people and not having that in person, it's, it's an adjustment and it's, we're gonna be able to do this remotely. We're gonna be able to connect. We're gonna learn how to connect with people honestly and authentically at a distance virtually. But in the meantime, it is, it's a little bit tricky and challenging and I do miss that, that interpersonal, you know, one-on-one -on -one communication yeah. conversation. Yeah. Now, a lot of these things you brought up, I, I you want to talk about projections? Cause I know that's a project you're working on. That's you have did in person and it was a project that, you know, ran for years that people would gather at and now you've turned it into a virtual gathering. And how has that uh, transition been? What uh, challenges or what uh, have you found that was uh, like, wow, this, I didn't expect this or I really like this part of it. Yeah. So for those who don't know projections is basically, it was, it was an idea generated by Frank Mayo. Uh, the photo closer and it was about just giving artists a voice you know giving them a platform to share their work there's so many incredible artists just in new york i'm used to saying here in new york but i'm not here in new york but in new york city it started and uh, there were plans to take it elsewhere but it was about giving artists a voice and a platform to share their work and literally giving their voice like it's one thing to see an image and if you saw my image and i saw yours that's great but to have that conversation to know who that artist is is a whole different thing. And when I came on board, I did a presentation on some of the work I did with um, the, these women in, in uh, Cambodia and victims of sex trafficking. And, and, I, and I couldn't do it on a, on a live platform. It had to be in person. And when I saw that, I realized, wow, like these stories need to be shared. So that's when I reached out to Frank and I said, let's really take this up to the next level. So I started filming it. I built the website out. We're, we're giving people a voice that they can share with the world now. And now one of these discussions I'm having with B&H and Frank and some other people I can't mention yet is about now that we're taking this virtually, we can access the whole world, not just the people who happen to live in New York City. And what does that look like? What does that mean? And yeah. can, we, can we really use this as a platform to bring everyone up by their bootstraps, so to give all artists a way to share their work, share their voice, share their projects, what they're working on, who they are, in a way that they can give that to potential clients, customers, have people reach out to you directly, put it up on, put, you know, they all have their own pages. So how can we give this back to the community in a way that you can share who you are and who you represent and ultimately have that benefit you? Uh, what, when and how do people find this, uh, the next projections? So projections.live, just www.projections.live. Uh, the next one's gonna be May 6th. The last one we did, uh, was truly incredible. I know Claudia Paul is, is watching. She was uh, such Charles an amazing Sessler. artist. We're going to have some amazing artists coming up on May 6th, <laughs> including yourself, sir. Uh, and the, the idea being is... You know, at a momentary freak out. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a good, that's a good uh, segue. Because the, yeah, because yeah, that, your first your first three, you know, Charles and, um, and Alex and, uh, and Claudia, uh, have been shooting stuff 
in in the eyes of COVID and and during this, um, Claudia has been shooting. You know, uh, uh, the medical workers and. Uh, it was an incredible project. Uh, Charles was shooting the faces of Zoom, and, and he's a portrait photographer, and he was felt like he was robbed of, you know, and very much like I do, I'm a portrait photographer, of shooting these people in the connection in person. And he has been shooting people through Zoom and, and doing photo sessions, and it's a wonderful project. And Alex has been shooting beautiful photos uh, throughout New York and stuff like that. So when you guys asked me to be on it, uh, I, I'm like, okay. And I'm like, well, I, you know, I'm not out there shooting. I'm outside of New York, and I, I want to be shooting there and uh, I, i'm not i'm doing all these live presentations and that doesn't really equate well to projections and the, i knew that uh, i had been asked some questions and i'll go i'll save this for, for so you for show the, us some cat photos for, what am i supposed to do with cat photos I don't to, oh yeah the crazy cat photos but I, I came up with i went back into my archives and i pulled these photos that really I've been hiding from for a long time and uh, they've been sitting there. And one was such a difficult, difficult project. It was when I went to Uganda and it was kids that uh, basically have no one, their parents are, have either been uh, executed or on death row and have no one. And I've had those pictures sitting there just because it was such a dark, dark, topic that I didn't want to deal with it, that now that uh, COVID's here and these last couple of weeks, the darkness and demons have been banging on my walls. And I, I've definitely felt ups and downs in a big, big way. And not to be able to connect with people was freaking me out. So I went back and dove into these dark pictures and, and pulled happiness and also pulled you know, real emotions out of it. And then I went back to my happy place of pulling another project, but I, I'm so psyched to be on that. But yeah, for a moment there, when you said, well, we're really doing something COVID related. I'm like, well, these are COVID related. <laughs> I mean, everything is, yeah. And, and honestly, I think that's going to be really rewarding to share that with other people because how many, the community is mainly photographers and how many photographers are in that same boat right now. You're feeling stuck. You're feeling like I can't go out and shoot. You're feeling kind of restrained. But what you're not doing is looking back at all these beautiful images that you've created that you haven't visited, that you haven't edited, that you haven't shared. I think this could be really inspiring for, and, and really, you know, a lot of people will take a lot from that to say, what do I have in my closet? What haven't I shared? What haven't I opened up to the world? Let me revisit that. And what a, what a perfectly relevant and beautiful time to be able to do that. So I'm glad yeah. that you came up with that. Uh, I'm really looking forward to being on it. Um, what projects are you working on next or what, what's uh, kind of brainstorming your heads now? Hmm. Oh, um, I'm still going to continue doing my night photography. That's uh, my passion. Continue to make a light painting uh, tutorial. And then we're working with B&H to create some content. Living on the road in the RV is kind of a, a fun topic that we're going to try and capture as well. And uh, working with the community here in Moab, we've been talking with a couple key players and how we can help the local businesses uh, is uh, on, my, on my agenda as well. Yeah, you, you can ask me every day and I'm going to give you a something new. Yeah, I, I hear you. Day. I'm the same way. Um, <laughs> I don't take a the downtime things. well. Adobe's a couple things. Um, Profoto, the, the lighting companies, there's some some things I'm working on with them that'll be coming out shortly. b &H, there's a few things, so I'm gonna have that Lightroom Live coming up. That's that'll be a weekly thing. Uh, there's a podcast that will be syndicated through B&H, but it's live now with Steve Simon. I don't know if you're awesome. familiar with Steve Simon. Yeah, incredible street photographer um, who's not on the streets right now too. Um, so I, I, I'm doing a podcast with him. I'm also gonna be working with a green screen company about building out a better <laughs> green screen. Uh, so that'll you'll stay tuned. I think you should that. paint everything in the RV green. <laughs> Just paint and then, it all. The cups, then, the, it, the walls, the pillows, everything. Yeah. And we're just going to paint it all, yeah. And then we're going to give it back at the end of this whole thing. Um, but it, it is, it's a, it's a work in progress. It's, it really is a work in progress. Trying to figure out this next series of videos. How do I bring my experience virtually as a boot camp? Um, the one-on-ones I do on a daily basis here between sunrise and sunset. And that's with students all over the world. And it's just a beautiful thing to be able to connect with them and go through their life's work and help them bring these projects to fruition. So that's an ongoing thing. Um, but day by day, there's, there's companies I'm reaching out to. There's organizations that we're having this dialogue. How can we work through this together? Yeah. And that's keeping me more busy than anything is finding ways of working with these companies and building that dialogue. And, uh, yeah, that's a day by day basis. So this brings me to my closing question that I ask all my guests at the end of the episode. What did you see in the last week that gave you hope or made you smile or made you laugh that uh, went, it's going to be all right? Hmm. 
uh, Cliff always makes me feel like it's going to be all right. He's always making me laugh. I mean, it, I, I, don't, I only really spend all my time with one person. So that's, that's a good I answer. Don't watch the news. So it's really probably something Cliff has done to make me laugh. <laughs> um, for me, it's been, it's, it's been this human connection, right? And, you know, for a lot of people, that's what I think we miss the most. And so I had my birthday yesterday and, uh, you know, Happy not birthday. Be around, thank you. And to not be around friends and families, it's been difficult, you know, for a yeah. lot of people. And so, you know, to wake up and to wake up to, and I don't recommend this for everybody, but to wake up to a zoom call of 15 a to 20 of your, <laughs> of your closest friends and family looking at you as you put your, you know, your shirt on and your, and your hat because of the haircuts these days. And uh, to have that connection and have everyone smile. And some of them haven't even met. There are people I met in Vegas. There's clients I have in different parts of the world. And to see all these people just come together, that was a beautiful thing. And then to end the night with uh, our host over here who, you know, because you can't really order a lot of food. He custom Th This is how I spent my, my birthday, which was on I April 3rd. Yes, oh, no, I love that photo. <laughs> That's I how that. I did my birthday on April 3rd. I totally <laughs> and so to have this sort of like family at a distance and to have our hosts make a pie and blow out candles and to, uh, you know, to Skype call with friends and family, it was, it was a stark reminder and also just a beautiful thing to experience. And that really did give me hope because that wouldn't have even happened if this, if COVID didn't happen, I wouldn't have been on a call face to face with people from all over the world who I've become so close with all at the same time, learning each other and all sharing embarrassing stories of me. Um, so that, that really, that was a beautiful thing. Yeah. For me, it, it, every week is pretty much the same thing is that moment where seven o'clock comes and everybody's cheering out the windows for the first responders, something like that. I have always been a sucker for a moments that uh, bring unity and, and people closer together, whether it was a, a concert where people all start singing, hugging the same song and rocking back and forth. And uh, it's moments like that, that, uh, you know, you see that, that people can be uh, beautiful, beautiful people and empathetic and, and all these zooms, I agree are amazing how people are reaching out and touching people and wanting to support people. And I want to yeah. thank you guys for being such incredible guests. Um, is there anything you want to leave a, a closing note to, to, to photographers and a little uh, inspiration and positivity because we always like to be positive which doesn't sure. mean being happy-go-lucky <laughs> every moment <laughs> just don't give up I mean if this is your passion this is your love keep keep working at it know that things are going to change and maybe change for the better so you know just keep maybe learn some new skills um, stay connected with the community I would say just in three words, you're not alone. Not just, just know that, just remember that, just feel that and experience that you're not alone. You know, if this conversation and all the conversations you're doing on open talk show that it's that you're not alone. We're all going through this and you're not going through this alone and just keep that in mind. Yeah, I think uh, that's uh, well, well put. Um, and uh, with that, I want to say thank you so much from APA. We uh, obviously um, are, very, very, um, it, it's even hard to put into words. We're so wanting to be part of a community that supports each other that, you know, you, you said it the best, you know, you're not alone. And uh, this is more important than ever that uh, we know that we support each other and that we look out for each other and that we say, hey, how are you doing? And uh, we look in on each other because these are the moments that uh, are really kind of uh, the most important that we're going to remember. And we're going through a historical moment that, uh, all of us are living the same thing around the world and uh, there's never going to be another experience hopefully like that in our, our lifetimes. Um, so uh, I think it's uh, when you kind of sit there and think about what, am, what's my role in this, it's very important as an artist to say, how am I experiencing this and what am I feeling? Cause these are the archives that we're going to leave, you know, for the future generations and the people that are going to look back on this because this is a historic moment that's going to be studied and looked upon for decades and millennia to come. Um, and with that, um, I say thank you very much. Next week we have I an amazing. Say thank you to you, Travis, for creating uh -huh. this opportunity. Thank it's you for amazing doing what, what you're, you're doing. doing. And I reminding agree. people every day that they're not alone. Honestly, thank I, you. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully catch us next Thursday when we have another wonderful panel. And I want to wish everybody well and stay shooting and stay creative and uh, reach out to people and make sure that uh, you're staying in contact with people. 
Everybody Thanks. have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Take, Take care. care. Take care, guys. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the note to end it on right there. Smile. Right there. And I'm gonna hit end. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>